I first of all identify, I agree with what Jacques told you, which is, um, you know, dealing with the loss of someone you care about is probably the most difficult thing of all. I would say maybe uh, as a child, seeing the level of frustration between my parents, you know, I had four different fathers and watching them kind of, um, you know, accept whatever life gave them as a, it's, it's why a lot of my drive came about is seeing my fathers be berated by my mother, who I love dearly, um, and just watching them break down. Like, you know, I, the, the, probably the single most painful event of my life, but also shaped me in such a beautiful way, was when I was 11 years old, we had no money for food and it was Thanksgiving, which in America is a you know, big holiday feast. Mm -hmm. And so we'd been without food before, we'd have crackers and butter, and, you know, we survived. But we weren't gonna have a Thanksgiving feast. And there was a knock at the door and I go to the door and there's this giant guy there with groceries in each hand and he had a pot beside him on the ground with an uncooked turkey. And I, I just like, I said, uh, who are you here for? He goes, I'd like to speak to your father. And my mom and dad were yelling at each other, saying things that you can never take back. And I'm trying to make sure my younger brother and sister, they're five and seven years younger, wouldn't hear any of this. And that day changed my life because I thought it was gonna be the most exciting day. Dad, dad, go to the front. What is it? I said, it's for you. You answered, no, it's for you. And I remember they opened the door and I was just so excited to see my father be happy. Like, we're gonna have a feast. This is gonna be incredible. And he got angry. And he's like, we don't accept charity. He went to slam the door in the man's face. And the man's foot was there, so it bounced off his foot. He still opened the groceries. He's like, sir, I'm just the delivery guy. He said, it's, it's not charity. Everybody has a tough time. Someone bought this and they're sending it to you as a gift. My father said, we don't take charity. He goes to close the door again. This time the guy's shoulder was there also, so it bounced off again. And then I was standing right there and there's this moment I'll never get where the, this man <laughs> looked at my father and he looked at me and he said, sir, don't let your ego make your family uh, uh, suffer. And the veins on my dad's face on the, on the side of his neck, I'll never forget, they bulge, I, like his face turned red. I thought I was gonna punch him in the face. And then there's this moment, my dad's shoulders dropped. He took the groceries, slammed the door, didn't say thank you, and stormed off. And I always remember thinking, like, how come he's not happy? You know, you talk about pain, it's like I love my father so much. And he, he, there's basically three decisions that I think everybody makes in their life, that whether they're aware of it or not, moment to moment. I figured this out afterwards because I was so obsessed with what's wrong, because he eventually left our family. And that was the most painful thing I ever happened. So it's like feeling like I failed, you know, I blame myself, like why couldn't it get through to my father? You know, I was 11 years old. But later on, it helped me understand the three decisions are first, you gotta decide what to focus on. Every moment of your life, there's something grabbing your focus and you don't experience life, you experience the part of life you focus on, right? What's wrong is always available, so is what's right, right? And there are different kinds of focus. And my dad's focus that day was really on what he hadn't done. And I know that because he kept muttering it. You know, I hadn't taken care of his family. There's no funny for Thanksgiving. Somebody had to give us charity. And then the second decision you make about once you focus on something is what does it mean? Is this the end or the beginning? If you think it's the end of a relationship, you're gonna behave different than it's the beginning, right? Um, my dad's meaning was that he was worthless. And so then the third decision is what do I do? Which whatever meaning you come up with creates the emotions which affects what you do. And what he decided to do is leave our family. But for me, it was like, this is amazing. I mean, you know, we haven't having Thanksgiving. You know, this is, a, this is incredible. We got food, what a concept. And then the meaning though is what changed my whole life, which was, wow, strangers care. That completely changed my life. That painful experience, I couldn't deny that somebody who wanted no credit delivered this food to my family. And so what I decided to do is say, someday I'm gonna do this for another family. So when I was 17, I had two families and it was a euphoric experience. I went in jeans and a t-shirt, I didn't go like the delivery guy, but I wanted to see the face of the people. And then next year was four people, and then it was eight. And I literally, my thing was doubling. And I had a little company, and then I got to a million people a year, and then I got to four million people a year. Then when I was doing Money Master the Game, I'm interviewing these billionaires, Jay, and I'm watching Congress cut food stamps, it's now called the SNAP program by, I think it was $6 billion. So every family that actually needs food, and my family was one of those back then, they all have to come up with a week's worth of food out of every month. So I was like, I called my team and I said, how many people have I fed in my lifetime? I didn't know that it was 42 million meals. I was like, this is pretty cool. And I was like, what if I fed 50 million people, like my entire lifetime in one year? And I was like, what if I did 100 million? What if I fed a billion people in 10 years? So that was seven years ago. We're at 850 million meals. Right, and I'm gonna hit the billion earlier than what my promise and targeted, and then I've got a sustainable approach. But I tell you that because my worst day was my best day. Mm -hmm. 
my, the most painful day, the day where I felt like I could do the least, where I felt impotent, led me to have new understandings, new skills, new capacities, new drives, new hunger. I mean, would I really be feeding 100 million people a year, 100 million meals a year if I was well fed as a child? Probably not. And you know, I'd love to believe I'm such a perfect person, but no, I'm just, <laughs> I just know what suffering feels like, yeah. so I don't want anybody else to suffer, you know? Yeah. So I think sometimes the suffering experiences of our life, if we don't let them crush us, we let them drive us, they, they actually become the best day in your life. And yeah. taking your worst day and making your best day is a beautiful target for anybody. You see there's grace in life too. It's yeah. like, if you can, like I used to think in the early days, because my mom was beautiful. She was the most influential person in my life. And yet she also, when she drank alcohol and took um, you know, prescription medication, she got crazy. Yeah. So she smashed my head against the wall till I bled or feed me liquid soap. And I never told anybody about this when she's alive, but I had this group of young kids that I could see a tall white guy who seems to be quite successful. You know, what does he know? So I told him the whole story. But out of all that, it's like if my mom had been the mother I wanted her to be, yeah. I'd probably not be the man I'm proud to be. Yes. Like I, I had to grow, I had to become a practical psychologist at 11 to manage her so that my brother and sister weren't messed up. And it's like, there's grace in everything. And it's, I always, always think it's like, it's our job to realize the life's happening for us, not to us. Mm -hmm. And to find how it's happening for us, that's our job. If we do that, then we have a magical life. If we don't, but if your energy's low and you're exhausted, <laughs> then you don't, you don't find those empowering meanings. Yeah. You know, that's why to me, you can't separate the mind and the body. Yes, you, yes. Got, you got to feed the mind and strengthen the body yeah. on a daily basis in some way. And if you do that, life can be pretty miraculous.